Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So, today we've got one system from the user Future Cosmonaut in Discord, so massive thank you to them for sending in their system. And their system is just called WEM. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check it out. So it should already be here saved, my sims, there it is, so it's literally just called WEM. <laughs> so, let's see what he has got for us here. So. Right, okay, right. Here we are. Cool, that's quite a cool opening image. Okay, so, whereabouts are we? So there's our star. Right, so there's Wem itself. So, Wem, this is a sun-like star of nine planets and three large dwarf planets. Okie dokie, let's put orbits on. Right, whoa. Okay, so where are we? Some labels. Okay, so the first of the planets is this one here, Dune. So here we are. Let's go to realistic. Oh no! There we go. Right, cool. Lots of craters here. Okay, quite a cool-looking cratered world, actually. Kind of interested to see what textures is on this guy. What? What? That must be. That looks like a Mercury's been mixed in there. Planet 15. Pla no, apparently not. He must have made this himself. By colliding stuff. Ah, that's cool. Okay, cool. So. This planet here, so a small grey rock with brown craters and valleys scattered around its barren surface. That's a good looking cratered world, I really like that. Nice. Okay, next up we got Icy. Icy. So here it is, so again, very cratered. A blue dwarf planet with basalt flats dotting the ground evenly. Got a little splash of water there as well. Hey. Nice. Okay, next up we have got Ixa. A muddy green object thought to have been the collision of two smaller bodies due to the young age of its surface. And there's less craters as well, if you notice. Cool. Next up we got Tit. Titst. The largest object in the inner belt. The notable features are its green hazy atmosphere and pools of stream water at lower places. Nice. Awesome. Another good looking world there. So next up we got... Yes, we did that one. Next up we got... Mang. Where's Mang? There it is there. Okay, so a small planet with a breathable atmosphere and two moons. One of the features is what seems to be an impact crater that has irradiated the surface to come to the point where not many of the life forms can survive that area. Okay. It's also got some moons as well. So there they both are there. Cool. So we've done Mang. Next up we've got Krom, which is this one here. So this is the world we saw at the open. So if we just turn it all off, there's a good view of them. So, this large Earth-like planet is mostly oceanic with sparse islands with a single large moon orbit in it. And that moon also has an atmosphere as well. Excellent. So next up we have got Lily over here. This is the largest uh, planet you will encounter on your journey. It is a tan brown mix of bads and has two moons. So one of them is also a gas world there. An entirely different colour. Probably a cool sort of uh, gas giant almost. And then we've got this one as well. A rocky planet with a lot of uh, oceans going on here. So there it is, minus four degrees. Okay, so there are those guys. So there's Lily. Next up, we've got Theme over here. This one seems to have a lot of objects around it. There we are. This planet is one of the ugliest planets in the system, which is thought to also have merge of two gaseous planets, giving it a scrambled band colours. It has the most moons in the system. So here they all are there. It's got Triton around it. Look at that. Hey. So there we go. It's all of them there. Looking good. Nice. Right, next up, we are moving to... We've just done One. So that was that was theme, wasn't it? So, yep, okay. So next up, we've got Curio, which is the last one mentioned here. Okay, so it's quite far away. A green and blue ice giant with orange sploosh in the north. It has four moons. And there are all the moons here. Looking good. Nice. 
And that is all of the reading has for us. So if we just continue on, we've got some more objects here. I'm guessing these are all dwarf planets, aren't they? Which they are. So LMO, I'm guessing they are all the dwarf world. So very nice. There's a lot of them as well. Check it out. Okay. Quite a decent size of those. Okay, and then one of them's actually got a really big orbit, like a Sedna as well. But if we go back in, now what's this Nibiru here? What is this? This one wasn't mentioned. Here it is. It's like an interstellar traveller. It's not orbiting. It's just having a flyby. So pretty cool indeed. So that's uh, having a close flyby with this star before it gets shot into outer space. It has a ring of cloud around it as well. Very, very cool. Okay, excellent. So there is that entire system. So if we get a line up of all the objects there. Pretty short and sweet this one, but here it is. Nice and basic. So there we are. So there's our full lamps. All the gas shites are really nicely designed, actually. They're all different in their own way. All nice mixes of colour. We've definitely spent a lot of time making these. Yeah. Thumbs up for the gas giants. They're probably the highlight for me. Because, yeah, they're all pretty custom made all nicely. They ain't got just a few little bands. They've definitely had some work put into them. So very, very nice job to you future cosmonaut for sending that in. But with that all said and done... Yeah, that was a good little system, actually. I enjoyed that. So, yeah, thanks again to Future Cosmort for sending that in. And, yeah, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to press that like button. Let's see if we can go for 50 likes on today's video, guys. And also press that subscribe button if you haven't already. And help us on the journey to 30,000 subscribers as we are getting closer and closer by the day. And, yeah, I really, really appreciate all your support, guys. And, yeah, with that all said and done, make sure you all stay safe out there. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs>